Once upon a time there was a little girl. She lived in the country near the ancient forest. She often used to play in the forest, for she loved the trees, the birds and the wild creatures. She knew it well, and its darknesses held no fear for her. One particular place she loved to go was the enchanted glade. It was a strange place covered with green leafy branches, a high roof patterned with blue, either clear and light or deep indigo speckled with silver stars. At the entrance to the glade stood a huge gnarled oak tree, its girth so massive that she had to step twenty times to get around. Sometimes she hid in the convoluted hollows at the base, but mostly she liked to sit in a strange curve that looked for all the world like the lap of an old friend, someone who cared about her, someone who loved her. Such were the shapes the tree conjured up. Often, after a day playing in the woods and collecting berries, she would curl up there and go to sleep. Now the magical quality of the glade seemed to be in its silence. It was almost tangible, and yet one would hear in the distance the soft calls of the birds, and the stream chuckling its way down to the ocean, and yet these sounds were unable to penetrate the deep tranquillity of the glade. One day, as she sat comfortably and happily there, she saw a mist arising from the other side of the clearing. This was odd in itself, for she had never seen anything at all there before, just the lush green grass and scatterings of daisies, like a green reflection of the sky with daisy stars. She watched curiously as it curled and rose, until it almost touched the leafy roof, and then it changed and took form. She began to be alarmed as a rather horrifying head seemed to grow at the top, followed by great long arms and a twisted body. The misty head turned to look at her. Stretching out its claw-like fingers, she leapt from her place and fled in terror through the woods back to the safety of her home. The cloudy apparition haunted her nights for a long time and she couldn't rid herself of the sickening fear of its face and the terror of those long nails reaching towards her. For many weeks she was unable to walk in the woods, but with time the fear grew less. She missed her walks and started to cautiously venture back. She assigned the apparition to a dream, but still could not bring herself to return and visit the glade. Now one day she saw a robin, a great favourite with her, for she always felt it was a message from the spirit of the forest of hope and love. The robin was a little bigger than usual, and she felt it was telling her to follow, and so she did. It brought her to a part of the wood she didn't know, which surprised her, and suddenly she felt a great longing to go to her quiet glade. Then the robin disappeared, and she walked to where she had last seen it. She found to her surprise that she had been led to the edge of the glade by a path she didn't know. Looking across at her old oak tree, she could see the figure of her old friend etched in the wood quite clearly from this distance. She felt a surge of delight as she ran over the soft, damp grass and climbed into the hollow waiting lap. Sitting there, she realised the foolishness of her imaginings and felt quite at peace. Then, as the sky was beginning to darken, she saw once again the mist rising. She heard a strange haunting sound as if from a reed pipe. It sounded like the wind's breath, playing a melody through the shell of the tree. She walked from the safety of, of her hollow 
as the mist grew and took form. But this time it was a strange and elegant creature, tall and slender with beautiful features. Its eyes seemed to smile at her with deep love, and then it billowed out of shape and disappeared in the winds into the dark blue of the sky. As that image dissolved, another seemed to arise, this time a beautiful white horse which became a winged unicorn. It reared up in greeting and galloped up off into the sky, fading into the distance. Then came a myriad of misty bubbles which exploded to reveal delightful fairy creatures laughing and dancing with joy of having been created. They waved to her and floated off into nothing. Then, once again, the monstrous creature returned, even more frightening than before. This time, as he stretched out his twisted arms towards her, she stood up without a tremor of fear, holding out her arms to him. As she did this, his grotesque face changed from an angry scowl into a look of amazement, and finally peace, when he saw that she had lost her fear and accepted him. A strange look of beauty came over his crooked features as he experienced the feeling of friendship for the first time. Then he too disappeared into the night. It seemed strange that any thought she conjured up seemed to take their shape in the mist. Realising this, she wondered to what extent her imagination could work. Where do the fairies live, she wondered. And as she asked the mist, there immediately grew the most enchanting castle, elegant towers and turrets spiralling up out of each other, shining and shimmering, exquisitely beautiful. When that too disappeared, she came away from her tree and walked across the glade to where the music and mist came from. And there, sitting with his back against an old tree, was the oddest creature she had ever come across. She thought at first from his size that he was a little boy, clad in leather boots, reddish-brown jerkin and trousers and hat to match. He appeared to be totally concentrating on playing his pipes. There, perched on the top of his boot, sat the robin, and around his head fluttered fairy creatures, or were they evening butterflies? Could this have been a trick of the moonlight that shafted down the branches, spotlighting him in its silvery softness. The robin cocked its head to look at her, and as it did so, the boy turned his head, and she realised that this creature was not human. With its ageless face, it peered at her with the wisdom of a million years, twinkling in its friendly eyes in a loving greeting. And she watched as he piped his tune, and as the notes fell, they seemed to burst into smoky bubbles, which rose and floated up, joining together to form the mist she had seen. Finally he put down his pipe and said in answer to her unspoken question, I am the piper of dreams. <laughs>